This is a video uh, that is going to solve a few of the end of chapter problems for chapter 11 in the textbook. And uh, I just figured I'd solve a few of these because these problems are a little bit different to what we're used to from uh, the problems that I've been solving in the examples using a normal distribution. Okay, If you look at the table given to us, this is the table from problem 1 in the textbook. Um, it actually has these three different portfolios, and it, first of all, it gives you a dollar outcome, not a percentage outcome, not a return. And second of all, it gives you three specific outcomes and three specific probabilities for each of these portfolios. Okay, There's no real distribution assumed. It's not continuous, so we have to treat these problems a little bit differently. Okay, so... There are only three possibilities. There's a five that's possible, there's a six that's possible, and there's a nine that's possible, okay? You can get a four, a seven, or a ten. It's not that any number between five and six and nine can show up, okay? You cannot get a zero, basically, okay? So based on that, we're gonna I'm going to solve three of these problems that talk about Roy, Karaoka, and Telser, and so you just get a better understanding of how to do that. Okay, so the first problem I'm solving is problem 7, and it says, um, if RL equals 5, what is the preferred investment shown in problem 1 using Roy's safety first criterion? Okay, so we're going to solve this using these numbers. We're going to use Roy to choose our optimal portfolio. Okay, the first thing we need to do is we got to assume some kind of original investment to be able to consider these as returns, okay? Remember, they're dollars right now, they're not returns. And the whole thing about RL stands for the lower bound of returns, right? So we gotta, if we assume 100% original investment, then getting $5 on that 100 is gonna be 5%, okay? So if we just make that assumption that we originally put in $100, we can consider all these numbers as percentages, okay? We can call it 5%, 6%, 9%, 4, 7, 10, 1, 9, 18, and so on. Okay, so now let, what does Roy say? Roy, if you remember way back when, when we started talking about Roy, the basic criteria is we minimize the probability that the portfolio return falls uh, less than the, the lower bound of return. Okay, so if we were drawing our normal distribution, uh, it'll be sort of finding the point that's furthest to the left, and finding the point that's furthest to the left is going to be the point that minimizes that probability okay so we're going to think of it that way i'm not drawing it for a reason because we're not in a normal distribution sense okay these are discrete numbers there's only three different possibilities and so we gotta go with that okay so basically i'm going to write it the probability that our uh, portfolio has a return that's less than the RL, okay? The RL is what's set. It says RL is 5, okay? RL is equal to 5% in the textbook, okay? So the probability that RL is less than 5, and we're going to try and find that out, okay? The probability that, our, uh, that my portfolio gives me a return less than 5. So let's look at A, okay? Is there any, is there any number that's less than 5 in here? So remember, it's not saying less than or equal 5, it's saying less than 5, okay? We can only get 5, 6, and 9, okay? We cannot get any number that's less than 5. We cannot get a 4, we cannot get a 3, we cannot get 0, okay? So there's no probability of that happening, okay? The probability is uh, 0, okay? For, for portfolio A. Now let's look at portfolio B. The probability that our B is less than 5. Okay, now when we look at portfolio B, we have one number that's less than five. Okay, we don't. We only have one number that's less than five. These two are greater than five, so we only have four that is less than five. What is the probability of that number? The probability of four is one fourth. Okay, so it's one fourth, or 0.25. Okay, that's the only number that's less than four. Now similarly, if you look at portfolio C, we look for the same probability, okay, we said, what's the probability of getting a return that's less than 5, okay, we only have one number, again, that's less than 5, its associated probability is one-fifth, okay, and one-fifth is 0.2, okay, so what are we going to pick, 
we're going to pick portfolio A, okay? Because what was our goal? We wanted to minimize the probability. The minimal probability we can get is zero. So that's the only one we can choose, okay? Pick portfolio A, okay? And if you're looking at the order in which you'd pick portfolios, let's say A didn't exist and you were only picking between B and C. Which one would you pick? You'd pick C first, okay? Because C has a lower probability than B, okay? So the final order of choice is A, greater than C, greater than B, okay? Let's say you did not have portfolio A with a zero probability and you only had these two, okay? Then you'd pick C over B, okay? So that's basically the first question. The next question is gonna use Karaoka, okay? We're still using the same table, okay? It's, uh, this time, let's, let me read the question. It says, if alpha equals 10%, what is the preferred investment shown in problem one? using Karaoka's safety first criterion. Okay, so we're still using the same table. We're still using this table. Okay, we say that alpha is equal to 10%. So remember, we want to lock in the 10% that we can for our bad sort of outcomes. And then we want to uh, find the find the portfolio that gives us the highest lower bound based on that 10% lock. Okay, so if you think about it, w the lowest returns that we can get that we are going to get using our portfolios is 5% for A, 4 for B, and 1 for C, okay? But these probabilities are not 10%, if you notice that. It's one-third, one-fourth, one-fifth, okay? What can we notice? That any other number that's less than these three numbers will actually have a lower probability, right? It'll be a probability of basically zero. You cannot get any other number, okay? So if you look at, if you look at what I write here for portfolio A, okay, it says we obtain a probability we obtain a return of 5% with a probability of one third, okay, which is 0.333. But we can't obtain anything less than 5%, okay? So basically, we can obtain up to 4.99999% with a probability of less than 10%, okay, which means basically a probability of zero, okay, because we're never gonna get 4.999. We're only gonna get uh, five, okay? So. For, for portfolio A, based on that argument, RL is 4.99%. Okay, that, that's sort of the lower bound. We That's where our returns can go up to with a lower than 10% return. Okay, because as soon as we hit five, that's the true return that we get, and that has a probability of one third. Okay, similarly, now if we look at portfolio B, the lowest we can get, is 4%, right, the lowest we can get is 4% with the probability of one fourth, okay, with the probability of one fourth, which is 0.25. So if we go all the way up to four, but not including four, so 3.9999%, the probability is gonna be less than 10%, okay, because we don't have a probability of that happening. The probability is basically zero, right, up to 3.999%. So for portfolio B, RL is 3.99% okay we could write 9999 endlessly okay as long as we're not touching four we're still uh at our rl okay now for portfolio c we have one percent with the probability of one fifth which is 0.2 okay one fifth is 0.2 but we can go up to 0 0.999 percent for portfolio c okay with a probability that's less than 10 percent with probability less than 10%. Okay, so based on these three things, now we have the lower bounds based on our three different portfolios and we want to pick an optimal portfolio. Okay, so which one would you pick? You would pick portfolio A because that has the highest lower bound. Okay, the highest RL that we can get. Okay, what would our order of choices be? We'd pick A first, then we'd pick B, then we'd pick C. Okay, those are our three choices. All right. So basically, that's our answer. Okay, we picked portfolio A using Karaoka. We picked portfolio A also using Roy. Now, let's look at Telser. Okay, uh, we're doing question nine. So it gives us two different categories. Okay, it says if RL is equal to 5% and alpha is equal to 10%, what is the preferred investment shown in problem one using Kelser's safety first criterion, okay? So we're still doing the same problem, okay? We're doing the same problem. 
we're still looking at these three numbers okay and we're gonna pick uh, one of the one of the portfolios maybe we're gonna pick one of the portfolios uh, based on Telsa's rules so if you remember the order of operations with Telsa we calculate lower bounds for the three different competitors or for how many of our portfolios we have we calculate those lower bounds and then we check does that lower bound that we calculated meet what lower bound we wanted okay does the lower bound we calculated let's say 20 percent does it meet the five percent that i wanted in the first place if it does then you go to find the expected return uh, average uh, you pick a portfolio with the highest expected return okay so we already just calculated the lower bounds for the three different portfolios okay for portfolio a we had a lower bound of 4.99 percent for portfolio b so when I say RL comma A, I just mean what's the RL for portfolio A? Okay, what's the RL for portfolio B and so on? For portfolio B, we calculated 3.99%. And for portfolio C, we calculated 0.99%. Okay, where am I getting these numbers from? It's from this problem where I just calculated them before, okay? Using this, exam using this uh, explanation. So you can take a look at it if you so choose. Okay. And now, what are we doing? We need to compare that to 5%, okay? Compare to our required RL. And what do you notice? None of these numbers beat 5%, okay? They do not touch 5%. So what are you gonna choose? None of them beat 5%, which means we're not gonna pick any of these three, okay? So we do not pick, none of them are chosen. Okay, uh, all three are indistinguishable. under Telser. Okay, now just think about it, okay? If our cutoff, if our cutoff was not 5%, let's say if I change this RL, if I said, hey, I wanna make my RL now 3%, okay, I wanna make my RL 3%, then you would have these two choices that you could pick from, okay? And then you'd have to find the expected return of A, expected return of portfolio B, and then compare which has the highest, okay? In this case, our cutoff was 5%. None of these cross 5%, so we pick none of them, right? So hopefully these give you a little understanding of both kinds of problems. We have done uh, continuous related problems which are uh, using the normal distribution. I've also shown you how to do problems that are sort of uh, discrete like this, which have only three or four different possibilities and you gotta use, you gotta be able to uh, use Roy, Karaoka, or Telser in either scenario to be able to find the optimal portfolio.